Now we're now compiling has been successfully completed. We got one dialog window. This window is asking if we want to retry connecting with the hardware device or abort our model loading or if we want to use virtual heal device. In this case, we will use the virtual heal device. Once the loading process is finished, a heal scale window will appear. In HealScader, we have a new toolbar where we can load new model. Reload current model. I will choose these tools later. Also, there is an option to save setting files first, and then later we can load setting files. Here we can start simulation, stop simulation. As I said before, we cannot define the voltage source from the schematic editor. We will define it in the sources subcategory for model settings and the right side at the right side of the screen. We double click on sources, all sources from model will be listed here. Currently we have only one VIN source. Our voltage source can be arbitrary, sin or constant. For example, arbitrary we can use predefined waveforms with loading file. On the other hand, if we choose sign, we can set the RMS value, the frequency, and the phase of the sign signal. For our boost converter, we need a constant value. As you can see, this field is red and we have to type some value, for example, 35 volts and press enter. When the enter is pressed, red color disappears. Next, we will deal with the contactor settings in subcategory contactors. Contactor name is shown. It is our uh, contactor from the schematic editor. We can control the state of the contactor from the, the hill scale. With enabling SW control contactor state can be changed to closed or opened. The next subcategory is switching blocks. It is meant for the boost converter. From this place we can change the state of the switching component in the boost converter, but in our case we have developed control for boost so manual change state changing won't be used. The subcategory SCADA input limits the name of SCADA input components in schematic diagram. In our case, it is reference and PWM enable. Let's enable a modulator with changing value of enable to 1.0. At change reference value, for example 55 volts, and press enter. Now we can close this window. Category Output Control uh, offers analog or digital EO mapping. In our case, we use a VHIL device, so we don't have to do anything here, but in case of using a real hardware device, we can, for example, assign signals to analog outputs from our model, for example, Vout, Vin, etc. We can do scaling or make offsets, and we can use a padlock to disable changes. When setting of model parameter is done, I suggest to click on create new panel and open new blank SCADA panel. Now we can start our simulation. We will start our simulation with the play button. In our bottom right corner, we can see that our simulation is running and we can also see the time of the simulation. If we want to observe signals from model, we have to drag and drop capture scope widget on our SCADA panel. When we double click on a widget, new window will be opened and we will see an oscilloscope viewport. The viewport serves for signal observation. In left upper corner, 
we have a combo box where we can switch the modes between capture and scope. Current active mode is scope. From the left side of combo box, there is signals button where we can change signal settings. Actually, assign signals from model to oscilloscope viewport or up to four viewports. When we click, we can see empty list. With clicking on green plus, we are adding channels where signal from model can be observed. For channel 1, we want to assign, for example, V up in, that is voltage input. Click on it. In the second channel, we want to observe I in, input current. In the third channel, we can set VL, voltage on the inductor. For channel 4, we will take V out and for channel 5 we will pick the signal of E out. When we are done with this we can close the window. Now how do we assign the signal to our viewport? It's really simple. We can right click on the viewport and decide which signals we want to assign to this viewport or we can access more settings if we click on the signals button again. With checking checkboxes in columns we can use more viewports. Now we will assign a signal to every viewport. I will assign input voltage to the first viewport with clicking on the first checkbox. Now, as you can see, our signal appears here. There is a red line on the values. On the value is four squares multiplied by 8.75. It is our reference voltage, the one that we typed in the source category. It is 35 volts. We will go back. Now I want to assign the input current to the second viewport. To the third one, I will assign VL voltage. And for the last viewport, we will take V out. Let's close this window. As we can see, the voltage and the output of the boost converter is higher than the input voltage. Now we will learn how to make our signals from the viewports 2 and 3 more stable in time. In this case, we will use a trigger. The trigger is this red dot, but in our case we want to use viewport 2 for this purpose. To adjust settings, we will click on the scope trigger settings button. Trigger mode can be auto or normal. We will use the auto mode. We want the type to be analog. The source is currently V in and because of that our dot is on the first viewport. We want to change it to VL. We can change it by clicking on VL. Now our trigger, that dot, is on the viewport 3. Now we can change the threshold of the offset. We can change these parameters even if we pick up this dot and move it within the viewport. If we want it to come a little bit closer to our signal, we can change the time base. For example, 200 microseconds. As we can see, our signal is triggered and stable in time and it is uh, triggered on the raising edge. Now we will learn how to use the capture mode. We will change the active mode to capture. We can adjust the settings in the same way here or we can just simply import settings from scope. I will use this button. It looks like a gear with a green arrow. When we click on it, it, it asks us, do you want to import settings from scope or capture? We will click yes. Then if we want to record a part of 
our signal in the capture mode, we have to set up a trigger. We can make the same adjustments we made in the scope mode. The trigger settings are the same in the capture mode, but in this case we will use the force trigger. We will record our signal from the very beginning. Here we can change the number of the samples per second we want to record. 1 mega samples per second is fine for us. Here we can change the time interval, for example 0.5 seconds. Let's stop the simulation now. Click on the force trigger and capture tool weights for trigger. Once when we click on start simulation button, our signals will be captured from the very beginning. After a second, we got this message. Capturing process finished. Do you want to accept new data? Yes, we want to accept new data. Now we have got our record signals. We can zoom into our record signals by choosing one of two zoom tools from the toolbar below viewports. We can use rectangle zoom or constraint zoom. With rectangle zoom, for example, we can zoom in specific part of the V-out and it will be zoom, zoomed in on every viewport. We can reset the original view by clicking on Home. With constraint zoom, we can zoom in by using the vertical axis or we can zoom in by using the horizontal axis. If we want to export captured signals, we can click on the drive icon with blue arrow, choose which analog or digital signal we want to export, and click on export selected signals. Or even without choosing, exporting all captured signals is possible with export all signals. We can save our captured signals as a .mat file. We can observe our signals later, for example, in MATLAB.